Hey guys, welcome to Digital Screeny channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and like my videos if you really like them, okay? And this is uh, another video in this series of BRAT's 2020 dataset segmentation. And in the last couple of videos, we got a good understanding of our dataset and how to prepare the dataset for uh, training and segmentation. And I definitely recommend watching the last two videos if you haven't done so, because uh, at this point you should be uh, having the data ready for training. Okay, so what have we done? I'll talk about that in a second, but uh, again, a quick, quick high level overview. Get your data, download the data, and uh, understand the data set, which we have done in the last video. Uh, how do these images look like? How does the flare or T1, T1C, T2 and masks look like, right? So we got a good understanding of that. And then uh, we, we uh, let me go ahead and look at the annotations. We looked at labels like 0, 1, 2 and 4. And then we reassigned 4 to 3 because there's label number 3 is missing. So we did that and we converted the data uh, to categorical and we merged some of these channels. So let's uh, jump into the code to understand the custom data generator and uh, why do we need the custom data generator? I'll talk about that in a second when we look at the data, okay? Okay, so here is the code from last time, okay? And uh, what we have done here again was, uh, let me directly jump down here. So what we did, Okay, maybe uh, it's easier to explain faster if I look at this. So for each image in our in our uh, folder structure, for each of these images, for each of these images in each of these folders, again, each folder has like uh, flare, seg, t1, t1, c, t2, right? So for each of these, we, uh, we loaded them and we scalar.fit, which is we applied min-max scalar uh, to scale the values between zero to one. And uh, for the mask, we converted the mask to a type of unsigned integer eight because all we have is values zero, one, two, three, and you know zero, one, two, and four, and we are going to reassign four to three down here. Okay, and then for each of these, once we have these images uh, min-max scaled, we are combining them into a single NumPy array. Okay, a single volume or single NumPy array. So I'm uh, combining only the flare T1, C, E, and T2 and ignoring T1 for now. If you want, you can add T1 and experiment to see if that adds any, any value. Okay, so once you do that, we cropped both the uh, my, uh, my input values like X and also the mask into sub volumes of 128 by 128 by 128. And by that way, we are minimizing the area that's outside, you know, the dark region that's outside the actual volume and uh, also fitting them to a number that's convenient for us to work with when we get to uh, when we get to the code and uh, what else did we do that's it and we saved all of those as npy files which is nothing but a numpy array so we can load them from disk later on so at the end of this what we ended up was with input data 128 right there where we have training images and masks and images are all in NPY format. Masks will also be in NPY format. Okay, so this is what we have. And similarly, we have validation folder. Okay, now we need to use data generator to load 16 of these images or how many ever, whatever the batch size is. A given batch size of these images and masks at the same time, you know, at a time to provide that to our training model. That's what this video is all about. Four minutes later, now you know what, what we are planning on doing. Okay, so uh, Keras Data Generator, you cannot use it because it doesn't know what to do with NPY files. It, it's designed to understand JPEG, uh, TIFFs and PNGs, but it doesn't understand NPY, it doesn't understand NII files, right? So to do that, I just want to write my own custom data generator, which is very straightforward and simple because all you need is a way to load these and provide you individual batches of these. And how do you do that? Well, first of all, let's write a function to load the images. In our case, our images are NumPy arrays, NPY. So I'm going to say if my uh, image name has an extension of NPY, go ahead and use np.load, right? If you're dealing with uh, TIFF images or any other image formats, 
and you are writing your own custom generator, then all you gotta do is put whatever that TIFF is here and instead of np.load, it can be uh, cv2.imread or whatever function that you use, scikit-image or opencv or whatever you use to load the images, that's it. But at this point, all I'm focusing on is loading my NumPy array, that's it. And then it returns the NumPy array, nothing else, okay? So that's what we are doing right up here. And then down here, obviously I'm going to use load image and then supply those in batches. So this is the main part of my code, image loader. What inputs does it take? It needs to know the directory where my images are stored. It needs to know the list of images so it can read these images. It needs to know where the directory of my masks and the list and then what batch size I want to provide. Okay, so these are the inputs and why? Because first of all, we are going to see how many images do we have? It looks at the list and says, okay, you have 5,000 images or how many ever images, meaning the maximum uh, value we go up to is 5,000. So while true, okay, and this needs to be infinite. Keras needs the generator to be infinite, so we will use while true, okay? It's not like while something is less than something. Keras needs the generator uh, infinite, so while true, do the following, do what? First of all, my starting batch is zero and my ending batch is whatever the batch size is. So if my batch size is 16, so go from zero to 16 and do something, right? So that's what I'm trying to define. So while batch start is less than my total number of, you know, my, my number of images, yeah? Uh, then do this, okay? So this is my limit and X is loading an image, Y is loading my mask okay so i'm going to load an image which is basically np.load and i'm going to load a mask which is also np.load because we saved both images and masks as numpy if you are reading your masks in a different way or if you want to perform something else to your mask define a different function called load mask and then call load mask here okay again these are basics but again you never know uh, what you can learn here Okay, so image directory and go ahead and uh, uh, you know give you give, uh, sorry load image is taking what image directory and image list right so this is taking image directory and image list and it looks at the list of images and just loads those images that's it it doesn't care about anything else it just loads the images adds them into this numpy error and provides them in batches that's it so up to the end of this image list. And image list is basically my start of the batch and then whatever that limit is, yeah? So in a way, this is just providing you 16 images at a time, progressively go, or if my batch size is 16, progressively from zero all the way to how many ever images you have. Same thing with the masks. And we are going to output X and Y. See here, I'm not returning X and Y, I'm yielding X and Y. This is very important. That means the next batch, it's going to return the next batch of X and Y. And the next iteration, it's going to return the next batch of X and Y, okay? Read the documentation on what yield does in Python to get much better understanding of uh, why we are using this here instead of return, okay? Um, so what my image loader function is giving me is X and Y in batches. And then I added a counter uh, for my batch start and batch end, right? So our batch start goes from zero, and the next time it goes to 16, if my batch size is 16, and the next one goes to 32, and so on. Same thing with my batch end. And the batch end is always going to be my batch start plus the, the uh, whatever the batch size is, okay? So that's it. This is how you define. If, if, it, if you think it's still confusing, go ahead and code this and use the following code to test it out. So let's do that. Let's uh, run up to this point to see how this actually works. And we'll put this to use in the next video where we do an actual training and prediction, but right now we just want to see what it is doing. Okay, now let's get down to the generator part. I'm just testing it here. So what do we need for our generator? We need image directory, image list, mask directory, mask list, and batch size. So let's define that. Let's define my image directory as this, where all my images are stored. Uh, let me just confirm I changed things too many times. Okay, input data 128, train and images. Yeah, this is where I have all my images and I, all my masks are here. And then the train image list is nothing but os.list directory these, right? So let's run these one at a time. 
There you go, my directory. And then my train image list is, hey, go into that directory and list everything. So that's what this is, os.list directory. And if you look up here, train image list, train image list, there you go, my file names. That's pretty much it, okay? And then my mask list is going to be pretty much the same, okay? Uh, in fact, let me open both just to confirm that you see it's very important you have image zero mask zero image one mask one image 10 mask 10 and so on right so those need to be matching up or you can add a sort function to sort things based on i don't know number or whatever criteria and then you can match things up that way or you can also say hey uh, get a bit more fancy saying that uh, look at the file name and if it ends with the same check if the, it ends with the same on image and then put a print statement saying that hey these are matching or these are not matching typically you do that while you're building the code but at this point uh, we know that it's working let's put a batch size of two because these are large 3d volumes like even though this is 128 by 128 by 128 remember we have three similar volumes embedded into one right so we have three channels for the three bands so this is pretty big so i'm going to only use batch size two right now so it loads two of these but for testing purposes that's fine and i'm going to use image loader right that's what we call the function and then provide these provide these uh, uh, input parameters so let us go ahead and run that and that's it my data gen is defined now i need to test it how do you test it? When I call this data gen, what does it output? It gives me X and Y. It gives me image and mask. Does it actually do that? Let's go ahead and do that and walk through this. Because I used yield up there, I mean, I can just go through, okay, batch one, batch two, batch three, and so on. So I do that by putting underscore, underscore, next, underscore, underscore, and then this bracket. If you're working with TensorFlow, no, sorry, Python two point something, then it is just next. Okay, just a quick note. So let's run it. Okay, now I should get a batch of images and batch of masks. If I come up here, you see, I get two images, 128 by 128 by 128 by three, three represents three channels, and two masks, 128 by 128 by 128 by four, four represents these four categorical channels, okay? Each for each of these uh, uh, channels. So again, a sanity check, let's go ahead and plot it and make sure there is indeed a good match, that things are not messed up. So I'm going to randomly select an image number. We only have two images in this case, so it doesn't matter. And then randomly select a slice in each of these images and then plot it. That's what this part does, okay? And by the way, I'm applying argmax to convert my categorical into an integer encoded so I can plot it and have a quick look at it. Okay, that's all I'm trying to do here. So let's go ahead and look at some of these, okay? So these three line up and this also seems to make sense right there. Let's do this for a few more just to make sure everything is lining up okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty good as you can see. Yeah, that seems to be lining up very well with what we have in here. I, uh, if you're getting bored, you know, uh, watching these these videos where I do these type of things, uh, that's okay, get bored, but do not uh, underestimate the importance of cross-checking things before you do training. You would like to spend your time making sure things are right ahead of time rather than realize, rather than troubleshoot why things are going bad later on when uh, when the training doesn't happen. This is, this is coming from a wise guy who failed many, many, many times in not being careful. So please don't do the same mistakes I have done. Do new mistakes, okay? So uh, we're all set actually. And in the next video, let's go ahead and look at uh, just implementing this into our training and prediction and then we're we are done segmenting the brats data set okay so hopefully you will join us uh, you know uh, join me in the next video so until then do not forget to subscribe and uh, like these videos if you really like them okay thank you guys